All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbeen.com. Welcome to one more show. So let's do this. Let's quickly go over the Lironlimab news and the latest updates. Many of you are actually aware of those. And then we would do some chit chats as well. I want to understand what was your reaction with Dr. Uh, Dr. Laurie's discussion. So let's start. So here is drbean.com. And here are some of the links that are useful to understand the discussion that we would have today. This is a link about the length of hospital stay. The reason for that is that as we talk about Lironlimab's efficacy for the ICU uh, bound patients, so the patients on ventilations, uh, they have they have calculated that for 14 days. So we want to understand what is the normal length of stay for a patient. So this is one such link. Then there is an, another link, which is also about the COVID-19 hospital stay greater than three weeks. And this is from the US. The other, this link shows majority of the China and then compares it to other. This link compares it to, uh, sorry, presents it within US and actually one state within the US. Then this is April 1st news from Liron Limap or from Cytodyne about their, um, uh, their Liron Limap, and we'll talk about it in a second. This is their March 30 news. This is their news on March 29. So all good news in last three, four days. And then this is a previous news, and we have talked about it. This is March 8, and I just kept it here for reference, and I have that link in there as well. And there is a, uh, as much as I'm going to uh, present some of the things that would be interesting, there is, I wanted to just balance it out with uh, a critical view as well. So let's start. So once again, here we are with the So apparently my, um, I'll have to open this thing again. So give me one second. Uh, I am going to buy, <laughs> a new computer soon. This computer has started doing these funny things. So, all right. So once again, here is our uh, gifts for humanity. And let's start. The very first discussion is the Liron Limab update. So the first one is on March 29th. Liron Limab is approved to treat COVID-19 patients in Philippines. Philippines FDA has approved it. And this is approved on a... a compassionate basis. So if you see here, this one. So Philippines FDA approves the use of lirolimab to treat a COVID-19 patient or COVID-19, hopefully, patients then. So here, has approved the use of lirolimab to treat a COVID-19 patient under compassionate special permit pursuant to FDA order number this. So hopefully, this would start uh, moving from there. So that is one news. Good news. One patient, but still good news. Lironlimab, inclusive of new protocol filed with US data. So Lironlimab or Cytodyne have filed a new uh, protocol to FDA, which includes the standard of care or the previous drugs, plus additional Lironlimab to them as well. And so let's see where does that go. But that is an interesting outcome. And that outcome or this filing comes from the data that I would present to you in a second. And in the same news, they also said that the company is now looking to enroll patients in other countries as well. So Philippine, one patient is an example. They are now looking towards Brazil as well. The reason is that they are showing, the company is showing that out of the phase 2B3 trial that they had the data from, there is a subpopulation of patients there where Lironlimab was really useful. So we'll, we'll look into that in a second. So here is the third news, and this is this news, and this is what I want to kind of bring us all on the same page. This one, Cytodyne's Lironlimab 
decreased mortality at 14 days. So please keep an eye on this mortality, de decreased mortality at day number 14 by 82%. 82% is beautiful with statistical significant p-value of 0 0.02. Remember p-value of 0 0.05 and, and then above that is bad. So 0 0.02 is good among critically ill COVID-19 patients. So let me just put the criticism out first so that we can put that to the side and then discuss the, the drug itself or the results. The criticism was that there were in this trial, there were 328 patients and lirolimab or cytodyne looked at only a smaller sub subset of 62 patients and then said, hey, for these 62, our results are significant. So that news, that criticism, fine, valid. I still believe that if there is a drug that can help someone who is on a ventilator or ECMO and it can save them, then whatever small population that is, it is useful. So that is my opinion. That is my position. I have no interest with Lironlimab. I have no uh, financial interest or commercial interest or any other interest of any sort with them. So let's look at this data. So to understand this data, first is the context. The con context is length of stay. The reason for this context is that they say that, hey, at day 14 in ICU, lirolimab helped improve the chances for survival. So let's see how long do the pa people, patients, stay in ICU if they are in ICU. So let's look at it. First, hospital length of stay. So the links that I showed you, the studies that I showed you, one study observed, so that was a meta-analysis, they observed from other studies that in China, in China, people in ICU, in hospitals, stayed anywhere from four days to 53 days. Outside of China, when somebody is hospitalized with COVID, their average is anywhere from four, this is actually median, for the range to 20 days. So different from China. ICU length of stay in China has been six day to 12 days. The reason that ICU length of stay is shorter is that more people die there. And because of that, the length of stay is short. So in China, six day to 12 days. And outside of China, that means the rest of the world, wherever the study is collected data from, four days to 19 days. So put this within the context of Lirolimab that they are talking about 14 days. So that is, is that a good number? For example, if we say at 14 days, the efficacy is 82%, then what would happen on 15th day? Would some people actually die on 15 days that were on Lirolimab, but we did not count them because we counted the day before? So I wanted to make sure that we are kind of aware that it's not a bad number uh, because this is the kind of stay in the ICU. So if we look at the second article that I showed you, that is in Indiana, the length of stay. So regular hospital length of stay is 23.5 days. So this is a study from Indiana. In the ICU, the length of, length of stay is 16 days. And the reason uh, the article conjectures, they say the reason is possibly because in the ICU people die earlier. So I hope that now we have a framework in our head that the possibility of length of stay in the ICU is somewhere around 14 days. So the 14 days cutoff seems to be a, a reasonable cutoff. So with this, now let's look at their results. So this is their CD12 severe to critical uh, phase trial, 2B3 results. They originally had 384 patients in there. Uh, when they published the result for that, the uh, the efficacy was not for the primary endpoint was not statistically significant for this number that got them a lot of criticism i remember i made a comment as well that i'm not impressed with the data however what they did was they kept looking at data further and then they found out 
and they have used this word over here. So if you see here, upon further statistical analysis of the critically ill population, that means hospitalized patients receiving invasive mechanical ventilation or ECMO, it was revealed that when lirolimab was added to the standard of care. So this is because they use the word re revealed, I, I use the word they found out. So they it was revealed that out of these 62 patients, that if lirolimab is added to standard of care, so whatever standard of care they have, for example, let's say they may have remdesivir, plus they may have dexamethasone, or they may have some anticoagulants and, and other such things. So whatever was their standard of care, plus if they added lirolimab, then at the 14th day, at the 14th day, the mortality rate was reduced by 82% in lironlimab treated patients. That is standard of care plus lironlimab versus standard of care alone. 82% improvement or 82% reduction in mortality. I think that is beautiful. And this was significant as well because the p-value is 0 0.02. So it is statistically significant as well. I know that the uh, folks who are criticizing this, they're saying, hey, you should look at the whole number 384. Why are you looking at 62? But think about it for a second. If I am in an ICU, I hate to call anybody else in the ICU. So let's say if I'm in the ICU, and I am in that 62 people's group, and I have 82% chance of survival if I'm given lirolimab, do I care for the remaining 384 that would already be discharged or whatever number 384 minus 62? So I think that this group, if there is an efficacy for this group, even then it is a huge and important outcome. So this is one. Secondly, they say that there is a five time, the patients are five times more likely to be alive compared to standard of care only on the day 14. Again, this does not tell me, and I, I um, give you this, it does not tell me that on what happened on day 15th or day 16th or day 17th, but this was their primary endpoint. This is what they're looking for. And for 62 patients subset, which was on ventilator and ECMO, they found that the chances of survival is five times more than standard of care. This is the reason that they filed a new protocol to FDA. They are saying that, hey, FDA, look at this. You have a standard protocol. Let's say you're using bamlanivimab for outpatient. Let's say you're using dexamethasone and remdesivir for inpatient. You may be using convalescent plasma, other, other things. Add this as well because we have proved that the, if this is tagged on, if it is added, there is five times more chance for survival. So I, I like this as well. Then they say there is 400% improvement in the ranking on seven point ordinal scale when given with standard of care. What does this mean? So for patient's assessment, there is a scale to say, how are they breathing? How is their temperature? How are their cognition? How is their movement and so on? So there are a bunch of uh, numbers, metrics that we collect together to understand what is patient looking like? So they used a seven-point ordinal scale to understand patient's improvement. And they are saying that on that scale, they improve, the patient improve 400% more when with the standard of care, lironlimab is given. My takeaway from this is criticism, criticism in its place for this critically ill patients who are on ventilators and ECMO Adding this drug to the standard of care actually does help, and that is the number that they are showing. My curiosity re remains that what happens after day 14, and I would love to see that data itself somewhere published where I can actually go and play with that data and understand what is happening there. So this is the discussion for today. I hope it, um, it made sense. Uh, I li like this that it is started in Philippines, although one patient, but at least it went there. So let's see, Philippines is already now um, banning ivermectin. So maybe this kind of a, 
data this kind of a drug would help so with this please like subscribe and share i would see you in a few minutes in the second chit chat but for this one like subscribe and share and if you are not going to subscribe or share just like the video youtube kind of rolls it more if they think people are liking it number one and number two if you would like to support my work there is a link to be a patron there is another link to buy me a coffee and then there is a link to support this work in general thank you very much and i would see you in a few minutes